Hey, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Gratzel here, and today we're going to talk about the type tool in Photoshop. So we're going to use typography a lot in graphic design. We're going to use titles for movie posters, or you might use somebody's name for a tribute poster, or just putting information on there, small blocks of text, things like that. So it's good to know how to use the type tool. Now, I'm not going to get into too much detail into some of the with the character spacing and all that. I'll show you where those things are at and you will use those at times, but I want to show you some of the cool like design features that the type tool can do with that. So first we're going to do is we're going to look over in our toolbar over here to the left and you see that the T that represents our type tool and there's two options. There's the horizontal type tool and the vertical type tool. So I'm going to stick with horizontal and there's two ways that you can put text down. You can do a point text or you can use a box text. So a point text, if I just clicked once, it would create a point and I would be able to type anything I want. And you can see that it's kind of creating this straight line of text and it's actually going to the left, kind of going off the screen a little bit. If I click this little checkbox here, once you're done typing and I go to my move tool, now I can move that back into place. So it's not like it's disappearing, but with the point, it'll type a straight line basically forever It'll just keep going in a straight line so if you want text to come down below it you'll either have to create a new point so if i click on the type tool again i can create another point and i can start typing Eesh. all right all right so start typing again go to that move tool and i can move that text around so i can do text like this if i want to align it by hand uh, the other option though that you have with the type tool is a box type so if i click and drag I create a box of text and you can see it's constrained to this box that I just drew. So I can type anything I want. And it automatically moves down because it got to the edge of that box. So this is a really cool way to do that if you want to keep it within a certain space. Now you'll see I've got my characters panel open here. Uh, if it's not in your workspace panel, you can go to your Windows drop down menu and it's under character. And some of the things that are there are the point size, like how big do you want the text to be? So if I highlighted that, I can change that down to 48 or make it, you know, same, make them different sizes within the text or make the whole text a little bit bigger. Uh, this one right here is what's called your letting. That's the space in between lines. So see how big that gap is compared to this one? I can actually change that, go to 10 point, and that's an overlap. That's way too small, right? So I'm going to go to 72. So typically kind of a rule of thumb, if you don't have it on auto, that's kind of where I like to leave it. But if you want to adjust it, if you make the letting the same size as your type, it'll be a good spacing. It'll be pretty re uh, readable or legible. Um, and then this one right here is your kerning. That's the spacing or tracking. I'm sorry. That's your spacing in between letters. So I can space everything out evenly. So a little 100 point, 200 points. So if I want to stretch that bottom part, I can do that there. Uh, there's also the color. So if I wanted to change just one color, see how I have the word want is still highlighted. So right now I'm picking and choosing and you can see that the word is actually changing color. So I can change the color of specific words in a type, in a box, or even in my point, I can do that as well too. Once you're done with that, you hit the little check box and it sets it, but I can come back to this. I can change that. And then my character panel, I can go back and I can change colors on certain things hit that checkbox we're good so right now if i open my layers panel you'll see i've got this is what's called live text or live type so i can it's live i can change it and edit it and do those kinds of things with it so those are some pretty cool features uh one of the other things i wanted to show you too if we click on this box here and let's say i'm going to hit control t remember it's our transform tool there's a couple things you can do that so i can change the size of this all right, and I can also rotate it if I wanted to. So you can rotate your text and you can do that with the box text. I can also do that, control T, with individual points as well. So if I did anything with the point, I can change those up by using control T. Another thing you can do, which is kind of fun, if you want to change the angle of it, so everything right now is pretty straight, right? But if I click on, let's say, I have my layers pan open so you can see which one. So I'm on this one right here, and I want it to have, go back at an angle a little bit. I want to skew it. If I go to edit and I go to transform, before we went to control T, remember is free transform, but that only lets us do kind of proportionally from the corners and vertical and horizontal. With transform, it gives us a few more options. So in here, I can actually skew 
And now if I grab a corner, I can angle this whole thing and have it going upwards, right? Going a different direction. So it's got a little bit more action to it. So if you wanted your design to have some more movement and action, you can skew the text. And what's great about it is it's still live text. So if I go in here, I can edit this and it still stays at the angle. So that's a great feature. It's still live text that you can go in there and edit that. So really cool feature. Another thing you can do too, let's say I've got my horizontal type here and I want this to go vertical. My client comes in and says, hey, I need to have you type anything I want, but I want it vertical. Well, instead of deleting that and going back in and clicking a vertical type tool, right up here in your control panel, you can click on this little button right here and it automatically changes it to vertical type. Real quick, back to horizontal. So that's just a really quick, nice little shortcut for you guys if you wanna change it real quick to vertical type. So it's a nice little button there in your control panel. And again, you wanna make sure that you're selected on the type or the layer that you wanna edit. So I'm on that one right now. If I were to select this layer, and again, it's not there, I have to make sure I'm on the type tool. And now I can change that. And that's what it looks like in the box, right? So not kind of what I want. That's really hard to read. I want thing, any type that's kind of written backwards. So make sure you're checking that out before you go and hit that button. But the nice thing is you can just click a button again and it goes right back to where it was. Another thing I want to show you guys is how to type on a path. So right now we just made some straight lines. We've skewed it a little bit or typed in a box, but we can actually type on the path of an object. So I'm going to click and find my ellipse tool. I'm going to click and draw on that shift button and draw a circle right here. And I'm going to make sure I'm going to go up to the top here. I'm going to put my fill, or I'm sorry, my stroke. Pin that up. I'm going to make it make purple there and to make it five point. And then my fill, I'm going to get rid of that. So just so you can see kind of what we're working with here, I'm going to move that over. There we go. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click on my type tool, just like I normally would. But when I hover onto this line, you'll see how I have this box around that little cursor. And as soon as I hover over the line, it changes to this wavy symbol, right? That means on a path. So now I can click and I can type on the path. So I can type on to hit path, on the path. Here we go. So really cool feature that we can do there. Another thing too, you saw me do that. So what I did is I switched over from the type tool to this direct selection tool. And what that does allows me to directly select the text and move it around. So right now this is on the outside and I can rotate it and I can move it around to where I want it to be. Maybe line it up a little bit better. Yeah. So you can see those little cursors in the middle there. So now it's kind of centered better, but now I can pull it to the inside. And now I've got it on the inside of that. Now that's pretty tight, right? So I go back to my character panel and I'm going to go to my letting there and space that out a little bit. So I could probably make the circle a little bit bigger, but you get the idea of you can type inside. I can also go back to my type tool, click on it three times and I can change the size of it, maybe make it a little bit smaller, easier to read. And again, the great thing about it is it's editable text, so I can edit this text any way I want. I click on the path. So really great, cool feature, something you can do with some of your designs. You can even create using the pen tool some freeform shapes and type on those paths as well. Last thing I want to show you guys is something kind of cool. I'm actually going to hide some of these layers so we can clean this up a little bit but I'm gonna show you guys how to put an image in your text. Now this is, there's a lot of things that you can do with type and text. Uh, and there's a lot of different directions we can go with this, but I just wanna show you this really cool feature just because it's really fun to do and just the steps on how to do that. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna create a layer of text and I'm just gonna write the word test. Just so it's easy to see. I'm gonna hit Control T. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. And you notice too, one thing for this, when you want to show an image through your text, the best thing you can do is use a really heavy font, very thick font. So this font right here I'm using is Gotham Ultra. So it's really thick. So that way there's a lot of space for the image to come through. If I'm using a really thin, like Times New Roman font, it's not going to work as well. 
because you're not going to be able to see as much through it. So it's not going to have the effect that you're going for. I'm also going to highlight this. Remember, I have that letting up pretty high. So I'm going to shrink that down, make that a little bit tighter. So that way more of the image kind of looks a little bit better and comes through a little bit. So what I've got is I've got my text that's right on there. Okay. Now I'm going to do is I'm going to go to File, Place Embedded, and I'm going to grab an image of a friend of mine, put him on there. And again, whenever you want to place an image, you always do File, Place Embedded because then it embeds the image into your document, which is really good. I'm going to resize it a little bit so that it's bigger than the text a little bit. And then I'm hit my little check mark when the image is all set. And notice how I put it on top. Okay. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to hide the visibility for a second. I'm going to click on my test layer and I'm going to hold down control and click. And I clicked on this little icon in the layer. And you notice how right away it grabbed a selection of that text, right? There's little marching ants. So let me show you that again. So if I hold down control on a Mac, I think it's option on a, I'm sorry, it's control on a PC. I think it's option on a Mac. And I click, you'll see my hand turns into a little hand with a little rectangle, dotted rectangle that's letting you know selection. So it's bringing back a selection of that layer. Okay, so I'm gonna click on that. I'm gonna bring back my image over the top and then you can see those marching ants kind of over it. So it's letting you know like, hey, there's gonna be a selection here. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna hold down the Alt button and I'm gonna hover in between those two layers. And you'll see I've got that little square with arrow. This means I'm gonna clip this top image from the bottom. And if I go ahead and click once, you'll see right there, the image is now clipped right around the text. And then when I'm done, I just hit Control D to deselect. And now I've got an image within my text. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, that's cool, but what if I wanted his face in there? Not a problem. If I click on that image layer, I'm going to hit Control T to transform, and I'm going to move that text and bring him down into that. And then hit that check mark when I'm done. So you can edit that as long as you select on that layer, Control T to transform, and you can grab it and move that image to better fit what you want inside that text. So that's a great cool feature on that. All right, I'm going to hide these two. I'm going to show you one last thing. I think that's what I said in the last one. I'm going to show you one more thing, and now I'm going to add one more, but that's just how it is. I got some cool ideas I want to show you guys. So this one, we are going to modify the type. So again, I'm going to put, put typography. You get a little bit of a bigger word here. Select this, and let's make it 60. Yeah, let's go even bigger than that. Let's go 100. A bit larger. Hit that check mark. Use my move tool. I'm going to drag it over. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is on that layer, I'm going to right click on the layer and I'm going to click on convert to shape. And what this does is it turns the type into a vector shape with anchor points. So why would you want to do this? The reason you want to do this is because you want to edit and manipulate the text. But the problem is it's no longer live, which means I can't change this. So if I go through all this work and then the client says, hey, I don't want to say typography. I wanted to just say type. You'd have to kind of start all over. So that's one of the downsides to this. But if you know what you're going to do and you've got your design done, you can actually do some really cool things with this. So I'm going to click on my direct selection tool and I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And you can see now that my type has all these anchor points in it, right? So now I can have fun with this and let's say I'm gonna grab these two anchor points and I'm just gonna hit my down arrow, hold it down until it moves a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna select this one, anchor point. I'm gonna hit my right arrow until it kind of comes into the Y a little bit there. And you can see I'm joining things together, just kind of having fun seeing what we can do with it. Just like that, just like those two bottom anchor points. Bring that down a little bit. I don't even know what else we can do with this kind of stuff. So actually, you know what? I'm going to grab this one. And if you want to grab individual ones, if you click on an anchor point, hold on the shift button, you can grab those. And I'm actually going to, I don't know, play with something. I'm going to have it go all the way through the G to the O. Go about halfway maybe. I don't know. See what that looks like. It's kind of fun. All right? So... This is a really cool way that you can customize your text really well. So not a whole lot of things that connecting the letters, but 
again, you can take this point, this point, and you can click and drag them too. I was just using the arrow keys. But yeah, if you wanted to skew it off to the side a little bit, you can do that. So you can move them however you'd like. But this is just a really cool way to add some fun variations to your type and to your design. Uh, so you can modify it. Again, you can't go back and re-edit once you've done this. But if you know what you're going to do, if you know what the text is going to say and you want to modify it, this is a really quick and easy way to do just that. Hope you guys enjoyed this one and I'll see you at the next one.